Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Sure Babe. This is episode 38. In this episode, I get to sit down with a fellow blogger friend of mine, Mary Lauren. Mary has been blogging for probably about six years, I would say, because I know this because I started following her and met her in real life when she started blogging and I saw the whole trajectory of her career just take off. So it was pretty fascinating to watch how she grew a following and started blogging and acquired some really great partnerships um, as well as growing her family. So in this episode, we talk all about blogging, growing a following, truly being authentic, never letting anyone make you feel small. And we talk a little bit about being a working stay-at-home mom. So without further ado, here is Mary Lauren. Hello, 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 everyone. Okay, I have Mary Lauren sitting right next to me. Hello. And (laughs) this has been a long time coming. I think I asked you to be on the podcast. Like, I always ask you at the worst time yeah. because like you literally had <laughs> Curran and I was like I just started a podcast you want to come over and record and she was like yeah I, I baby. just had a baby yeah. <laughs> um, so yeah and then or you're always traveling which is amazing I love following your adventures but then I think that I was like can I be on your podcast now and then you just had Ruby and then I had Ruby yeah, yeah. so yeah. this has been a long time coming yes and we're finally we here both it. wanted to do so this is Mary Lauren if you do not know who she is, I'll give you a short intro of who I feel like she is. She is a very dynamic blogger, influencer, content creator. Mm-hmm. She owns a shop online. She Everything she touches, I feel like, turns oh, to gold. Oh, you're nice. That is seriously... <laughs> but my, my claim to fame is I met you before you were a blogger, influencer. You yeah. were a new mom. You just yeah. moved here and... I think you had 6,000 followers on Instagram, which to me, I mean, at the time, that was a lot. Like, it was a lot for anybody, and now... It was all so gosh, new. The, it's crazy. The climate has changed. So today, we're going to talk about Mary Lauren and her life, and just what she wants to encourage you guys on, and some fun news. So stick with us this whole episode, because it's going to be good. Really fun news. <laughs> <laughs> but we're going to make you wait till the end, so you have to stay, stick around, and listen. So, yeah, I'm going to let you take the floor and tell people who you are and what you do. Okay, so I have been blogging for about five years, and it started as, like, a hobby and mostly a way to, like, just let out my feelings and let my mom read what's happening with my life. Yeah. Um, I was starting at a really boring desk job, and I hated it so much, and so I started a blog, and I started writing, and... It kind of took a backseat for a while. I was an accountant, and I went to school in economics. And my husband and I moved to San Diego, and I was an accountant for, I think, like three years. And then Ezra was born. And we had a series of horrible nannies, and I decided to just quit. And um, I started taking pictures of Ezra in my spare time, and me and Ezra together. And I kind of just gravitated toward all these women on Instagram because we were like new to the area and I was a new mom, which is scary. Mm -hmm. And I was honestly so bored because I was like a (laughs) new stay at home mom. And I like, didn't really know yet what to do with my time. I didn't have a business. I was just like trying to figure it out. So that's kind of just how it all started. And I gravitated toward Instagram and just creating a community and really like talking with women online and connecting with people all over the country, all over the world. And it like felt so good to just have this validation from other moms. Like, Oh my gosh, like my day was so hard too. Or like this happened and it was amazing. And you know, it's just, it was a place that literally like every day it was something where I shared our life and shared our heart. And I feel, I feel like that's kind of how, I don't know. It just kind of like, happened naturally. It's not really something like we'd set out to do, but it's been great. And so when did it become a business for you? When did it become, cause for me it was like three years ago it became profitable. Um, and then it became like the climate or the, the whole influencing world totally changed. That wasn't even a world when you started. It was just kind of blogging. So when did it it start? 
Um, I remember, I don't know if you guys have heard of Wee Gallery. It's this cute little kid's shop. And I remember like there were the, they were the first people that I reached out to and was like, can I have a blanket for an Instagram post? And they said, yes. And I was like tripping out (laughs) and they sent me this blanket that was like a hundred dollars. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I can't believe like I got this for free. Yeah. And I don't, I don't even remember how many followers I had then. Like I actually have no idea, maybe like 20,000 followers. And it didn't even like occur to me that we were like going to be doing this as a career, Mm -hmm. but I had heard that other people were like doing stuff for product. And I was like, we're super poor and this is amazing. And so we were like stoked on that. Um, when I became like full time, I think, do you want to know like how many followers I had or like just Um, one? Sure. Yeah. Let people know like when, when, cause I think a lot of people listening would like to monetize their Instagrams as well. So when could I think like a full time income, it was maybe like around like 200,000 maybe. And that's when Clay quit his job. Yes. So we were working on it constantly. And I remember Clay was like rushing home on his lunch breaks to like help me take photos of stuff. Uh, Yeah. And then we would like try to beat the sunset for like the next photo that night. And it was like the most insane hustle ever. It's stressful. I've been there. Yes. I know. And Clay like literally hated me because we weren't making money yet. Yeah. Quite. We weren't quite there. And Clay was like, why the heck are we doing this? And it was like a fight. And I was just like, come on, like just do this with me. But I wasn't sure either if it was ever going to happen. So I think like when we were just, we were kind of at a turning point where I knew it might be going somewhere and like, I couldn't take on any more, um, work without his help. Yeah. So or for me, it was when I was like, I can't take any more trade or free stuff right. without getting paid. Cause I'm putting so much time and effort. Right. Into this. Cause I did that for a really long yeah. time too. Really too. Yeah. And that's when Clay would get the most mad. He's like, you are doing all of this for like we a don't t-shirt. Need another stroller. Like, why are you doing this for a t-shirt <laughs> or a t-shirt or like kids clothing yeah. or whatever? He's like, just go buy it. And I'm like, we, I can't. That's so funny. Yeah. So hopefully that didn't sound snobby when I was like, we don't need another stroller. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Sam says all the time, and I'm like, but I want my readers to like. I want to test it out so they know like which one is the best. Exactly, it, it, it all is. It really does come down to work. And yeah, you have to value yourself. It's a lot of time that you put into and you it. Have to value yeah. your time. So. Yeah, that's the hardest part I think about an entrepreneur is just valuing your time over money. Yeah. So yes, that's like oh, a gosh. very important lesson that we learned in learning to say no to things that seem like a really awesome deal. Cause you're like, Oh my gosh, is it just going to take like five hours? But yeah. think about like what you're giving up exactly. in that five hours, even if it's spending time like with your kids or taking them to the park or I don't know, just yeah. valuing yeah. that more than the thing, the I thing. guess. But so anyways, what was even the question? Oh, I don't even remember. <laughs> um, but okay, since we're talking about Instagram, let's just go into it and talk about, um, obviously things have changed since the algorithm and mm-hmm. it, it really is a different place than when we totally. both first started. Um, what advice would you give to someone listening? That's like, okay, is it too late to join the game? I really want to share my life too. That sounds great. I would love to monetize it. I'd like to stay home with my kids what advice would you give to the person that's trying to grow a business or a brand online? Yeah. Oh my gosh. It's not too late at all. I've seen so many accounts lately that are just like exploding and yeah. it's exciting to me to watch because I'm like, this is a dying. Uh-huh. <laughs> it's still going. And I think if you find your right audience and you, utilize all the tools Instagram has, which I'm honestly not very good at, but I think Instagram is looking for people who are really versatile in the way that they're using the app. Um, so like doing stories or doing IGTV and all the things, which I like, this is the thing. This is the problem with me. I'm such an introvert that getting on stories and talking like stresses me the heck out. Like I can't, do it on a daily basis. And I have to force myself to do it, to do an Instagram TV video. I like want to die. So posting a photo, totally. I can like do that all day long and I can talk about, you know, things that are really personal to me and captions. 
But when it comes to like utilizing the full app, I struggle. Like it's so hard for me. So I think a lot of people are there with you. They don't like to talk to the camera. But it's funny because the people that I love following are so good at it because you're like, you feel like you know them and you're like in their day to day life. And like people like Natalie Borton or like Christina Christina Warren, Warren. (laughs) Christina is like my favorite person on stories because she's hilarious and she just like tells it how it is. Yeah. So I think if you're like just being yourself and you're utilizing the app to its fullest and I mean, their Instagram is going to be pushing the new features that they want to show. Yeah. I've always said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, like if you're using IGTV and you're doing videos all the time, like that's what they're going to be showing yeah. because it's a new thing that they're like excited about and they want people to start using. Yeah. You have to so, think of it as a business. If you're going to grow, like as a business, you have to think about using the app as a business. I totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's totally something that I could be better at and that I'm totally still learning from other people. Yeah. Um, you know what I think might help you? And I was recently just coaching someone in this and their Instagram. I think you should just be more like being an introvert. I think you just need to have like days where, you know, you're going to look at the camera and talk to them. Yeah. So then also your audience knows like Monday she comes on and she shares like a little bit of advice with us and we get to talk to her. I'm so stressed out already. (laughs) I'm so, so stressed. Well, I, I was hoping that would take some stress away because you would know. No, like, that's true, though. I scheduled it. Like, on Mondays, I'm I put prepared. on makeup. Yeah. And I, like, can exactly. get up. <laughs> I just wing it when I'm yeah. like, hey, oh, I have something. And my kids are, like, sleeping. I'm going to talk. Like, yeah. But if you're more of, like, this organized or introverted person, like, if you scheduled it and you knew, like, that's Tuesdays, honestly I get such a, tip. a good idea. Tuesdays that's I a do idea. a try on and yeah. in my IGTV videos and you run it like a business more. That's what I'm trying to do. I think but I'm, I'm going to do that. Yeah. Seriously, you might have just changed my life. Okay. <laughs> I think you just need to schedule it in. I think you need to have like a calendar. You yeah. Say, I like it. IGTV video goes on this day and yeah. yeah. Oh gosh. I like so, it. So yeah, you really I think do I have might to be it. able to do it if I treat it more like a business. Because I feel like sharing myself just in the everyday or taking videos of my kids or just posting whatever I go to post it I'm just like "Eh, no I'm not gonna post it right or you lose the ability to be in the moment if yes. you're always thinking that exactly. I have to post this, I have to video it. Which is why I've totally like yeah. navigated away from it because it's taken away from like yeah. being in the moment. That is the other side of Instagram yes. that I'm glad we're talking about because you really do have to have boundaries yeah. around it. Okay, so here's, let me just tell you, when a lot of people are like, how are you like taking photos all the time? I'm not. Yeah. No. I'm not at all. Like seriously, I get ready for photos like once a week. Yep. And... I, for me, this totally works. And I think that it might be like a healthy way to do it because you're not constantly thinking about like my next photo. Like we do a photo plan day. We like figure out what we're going to be shooting. Like if we have sponsored content or if we just want to do some organic posts and then we go out and shoot and the kids are like shooting for one day and we just go out, do something fun. We plan like an activity. Everybody's like dressed and ready for the day. And Mm -hmm. maybe that happens like twice once or twice a week and honestly the other days we just like you know it's just every day like the kids are going to school and I'm just working on our business and I seriously wear sweatpants like most days so it's not like every day is we're shooting and we're doing all this crazy stuff like it's just it's honestly like it sounds not as cool and not as glamorous but it's yeah. the truth and it's, it's it truth. makes it easier to be in the moment with your family more and to not worry so much about taking the perfect photo constantly. Yeah. I need to be better at that too. I and sometimes it's hard to when your husband works to like Oh yeah. I'm like, okay, on the weekends we have to do so much, but then I'm like, yes. I don't want to just take up his weekends. He's like never has a day off. But right. um, I don't know, you have to find what right what is right for your family. Yes. But I think it's really funny that you were mentioning how Clay was like, gosh, why are we doing this? Because yeah. I went through a phase like that with Sam, and he was like, what the heck are you doing? And I was like, yeah. I don't know. Like, so many fights. I had so <laughs> many fights. I didn't know what I was doing. I just knew it felt right, and yeah. it lit me up inside. And so I was yeah. like, please just, like, trust me in this. And I think once we started to, like, see money come in and things happen because of it, he right. was, like, on board and yeah. happy and super proud of the hard work that I put in yeah, totally. to producing good content. That's what yeah. it's about, really. And I would 
I would say to anybody wanting to grow a following, focus on your content. Yeah. Get that honed in on like, what does it look like? What is your message? What is your style? What is your voice like, and yeah. your style? And really don't look at the person next to you. I know it's hard and I do it all the time. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, so and so, how do they already reach out? Okay, yeah. I've been doing this for like seven years now. Yeah. But um, I know. you know, really I have to come back to my content and the people that follow me and how I'm giving to them and servicing yeah. my audience. So I think once you find your voice and you find your photo style and you're like, you know, you're kind of in the groove of things. I think one of the biggest things is to just not ever apologize for who you are and what you're standing for and what you're posting about and just post from your heart. I think a lot of times, especially working with like big brands and big businesses, it gets really hard because you're like, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like they kind of want you to share a certain part of your voice that maybe isn't yours. Mm -hmm. And you're like, that's kind of not me, but like the money's there. So it's finding a balance where you're like, I'm not going to say that, or that's not a product I'm going to stand behind and just staying true to your own personal like brand and your own voice, which honestly gets hard. It It does get really hard, especially when you're doing this to like you know, provide for your family. But I feel like to create a strong brand around your Instagram, it's so important. It really is. And we were just talking about like not apologizing for who you are. And I love that. I want to talk a little bit more about that with you because, um, I recently had, it wasn't a negative comment. Well, maybe a little bit. Um, it was like on earth day and I, I did a collaboration with Avino at baby, which I have always loved. Yeah. And I thought it was so great. Like Avino baby's like, you know, recognizing earth right. day. And so someone was like, did you look into that? I have, a, I highly doubt that Johnson and Johnson is like a earthy friendly product or whatever. Yeah. And in the past I would have totally given that person my time and energy and like wrote back yeah. to them and like would have had maybe like a reason for why I did it or felt bad or apologized. And now I'm realizing and I don't need to give my yeah. energy to every you person can't please that everybody. disagrees right. with it. Yeah, so you really do have to have that. It's it's like a little bit of a thicker shell, but it's also just an appreciation and an acceptance for who you are as a person right. and what who you're Who you choose to stand behind, what you truly use yes. in your life. Yes. And if you know you're being authentic. Yeah. If, it, if that's something that you use mm-hmm. and you share, like if I told you like, oh, this product is awesome. Like you're my friend and I think it's cool. Yeah. That's basically what I'm doing on Instagram. Yeah. There's not anything that I'm going to be like, you should look at this that I don't think is like worthy of my time. Yeah. So I feel like finding your voice, being authentic, being like unapologetic. That's one thing that's, it's taken me a really hard, like a really long time to yeah, stand can behind. Give an example of something that taught you like a little bit. So I am a huge Brene Brown fan. Like she talks a ton about being in the arena, meaning like doing your work. And like, if you're doing what you're called to be doing, you're going to get like scarred. You're going to get things thrown at mm-hmm. you. You're going to get judgment. Um, but you got to do it anyways, because you, the credit belongs to the person that's doing the work. And right. So I feel like she, I mean, she is a vulnerability and shame researcher. So what she's doing is essentially taking the shame out of being who we are. Yeah. Um, So can you give an example of a time where you were like, never again, I'm not going to be shamed like that. Or I need to be proud of who I am. Um, so I think there are a lot of, it's not like a lot of shame, I guess, behind it, but there are a lot of times when we're presented opportunities, like, Um, I mean, like in our life, like we don't drink alcohol and there have been a lot of, um, campaigns that are surrounding alcohol or wine or whatever. And it's just something where it's like, you know, there's like no amount of money that you could pay me to do that. Do you know what I mean? Cause it's just not in our life. And that's something that's, I mean, I'm not against it. It's just not something that we're like doing in our life. So it's not something that I want to share. Also, oh, this one was crazy. Mm -hmm. So we did a campaign that was supposed to be um, helping raise money for kids who, like, don't have school lunches over the summer. Uh And it was providing meals for kids um, 
like during that gap. So, but it was a milk campaign for the milk. I think it was like milk life or something, but oh my gosh, I was reamed for that campaign because of milk. Really? It was horrible. And I remember that day I was sitting there sobbing because the comments coming in, just like, I'm so ashamed that you'd be posting for milk. And I was just like, oh my gosh, I had literally no idea that I was going to get that kind of backlash. And I'm sorry, but my family drinks milk. Like... (laughs) We do. So do most families. And the milk. fact that like I wasn't promoting oh like a soy milk or a plant based milk, um, which we also drink. We drink all of the milks. <laughs> we don't discriminate against the milks. Oh gosh. Um. So that was so dang hard for me, yeah. and it was like that was one of the biggest ones where I was just like, "Holy cow! I can't believe literally." Cow. <laughs> I can't believe like the effect this is having and it was pretty horrible, but it also made me feel like, and you were doing, it just made me real, right. I was just like, okay, I totally get if you're against the milk industry, I can totally see. And like, after I did some research, I was like, I can understand where people are coming from. I totally get it. Okay. But that wasn't really the point of my campaign. The point was to raise money for the kids who are going the summer without, without lunches. lunches, right? Mm-hmm. So that's Your kind heart of was my good. yeah. yeah I was just like, right. okay, I'm not doing this to hurt anybody, you know. Yeah. And I just kind of had to like take a step back and be like, why am I letting this affect me so much to the point of bawling, like yeah. sobbing to Clay, like I can't do this anymore. Yeah. Like it was one of the hardest campaigns that we've ever done. And I will never do that again because it just doesn't affect me like it used to. You know, it's yeah. just you mean through you will each never thing. Do the campaign again, or you? No, I will never let that. somebody make me feel that way okay. because okay. I I feel like after a while it just becomes more apparent that like my voice is who I am. Yeah, and yeah. I never tried to hurt anybody. I was just promoting something I thought was good and genuine. And that's not like my problem. Yeah. You, <laughs> you know, know? I, I have some insights and I recently had something like that too, where I might, I did this like international women's day shoot. Um, and it like pulled it together in like three days and just asked whoever I knew was around. And then I was like, I got to this point where I was like, oh, I, I can't ask any more of my like white friends because yeah. if it was all white, people would be like, this is international women's day. And so I was like, I need to branch out and think yeah. like, you know, um, and I really, literally was just asking people I knew like that. I was like, okay, are they working? Are they here? Are they there? And, and we just got, I just wanted a picture of women, but right. I tried to make it as diverse as possible. I still got backlash yeah. and it was sad because it was like, my heart was like so pure in yeah. wanting to just show, show an array of every woman. Right. Yeah. The, and, and if I ever did it again, I'd probably cast it, but I didn't have time. And I talked to my brother, who's like my coach and I was like, it was on my birthday. My birthday's on International Women's Day. Yeah. So I was like crying to Aww. him and I was like, this is awful. And like, and he said, listen, this doesn't take away from your goodness. And I was like, that was it. I was acting like it may, it was a f- reflection on me that I'm bad in some way or right. that my negative fear is that I, you know, I messed up. Right. And he's like, you know, sure, maybe you could have done it better. What could you learn from this? And I was like, yeah, I learned it. You know, like I, should, sorry, this is my daughter right now. I learned <laughs> that I can um, plan things out better, but also it came down to the fact that it's like doesn't take away from your goodness. Right. If someone judges you, if someone right. has a negative thing to say about what you're doing, it doesn't take away from who you are. Totally. So. Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, any more thoughts on this? I'm like not apologizing for who you are. What could you um, share with someone? So I feel like along those lines, so recently I had a conversation. with. This is kind of how like this whole um, podcast came, I mean, between me and you came yeah. to light was a post that I did the other day. Um, could you remember the quote? 
I forget the quote. I Did, can't was it in your quote. stories or was it on your Instagram? Um, it was in my stories. And I said, I DM'd you and said, girl, let's get on and talk about this. Yeah. I'm just going to look you how organized I am in life right now. I know. <laughs> okay. So the quote is, be somebody who makes everybody feel like a somebody. So the other day, um, I had a conversation with somebody who was pretty high up in the biz, like major, major, and it wasn't a blogger. It was somebody who works kind of on the corporate side, I guess, of blogging. So I was speaking with her and trying to like, I don't know, I felt like I was putting her on this pedestal and like trying to impress her or like pick her brain a little bit and just, you know, have a conversation with her. Mm And she like completely blew me off. Like I was like peanuts, Mm -hmm. like nothing. And I, she, I don't know. I walked away from that feeling so horrible about myself. And I was like, she sees me this way and she must be right because she's so powerful and so high up there. And in my mind, I was just like, oh my gosh, what did I say wrong? What, what could I do better? Like I completely let it get to me. Yeah. And I, it took me like an entire day of just like self-reflection and I was so down about it, but it just made me realize like, why am I letting these, why am I giving these people that power? Mm-hmm. Number one, to make me feel that way. And number two, like, why did I care so much about what she says? Like, I must not feel, I must not know like who I am strong enough. To, so like somebody could tear me down that easily. So or it just, just made me feel, <laughs> or that. <laughs> That's what I was yeah. thinking. I was like, uh, are we the same in that way? We might be. We could go I off know. That, but... it, it's crazy how much power I gave yeah. her. And it, after power. I realized that, it was so easy for me to like flip my mind around being like, okay. she doesn't have that power mm-hmm. to make me no. feel yeah. less than anything. And Um, it made me realize like how I want to always run my business Mm -hmm. and I want to always interact with people. I would never want anybody to feel less than like completely amazing when they walk away from talking to me or having any sort of interaction, even online with me. It's just that, Mm -hmm. I don't know. I just don't want people to like give their power away. You know, so that's like the one message that if anything, all of this, don't give your power away and just make sure that you like know who you are strong enough so that if somebody says you're not worth it, you know that they're wrong. Yeah. I love that. That's such a good message because I mean, I'm learning that right now. I'm back in therapy and I was talking about an incident where I felt shame um, with a, with a close person in my life and she said, you know that no one can shame you but yourself. Like, yeah. and I was like, you're right. I, I took it on and let it shame yeah. me. And she's like, you know, when you realize it, you can understand it and be aware of it. And then like, she's like, eventually it'll be bulletproof. And right. one day you will not feel those things. Yeah. And I, I was like, this is so encouraging to hear that. Totally. Like, I mean, for one, it was like kind of sad because I was like, gosh, I'm allowing it happen. But when it's I'm aware process, of it, it's a process though. It's a total process. It's yeah. a total learning curve. You see like older women who don't care yes. what people are thinking about them. They don't and care. They, they do their, their thing and they're just like living life. Yeah. That is my goal. That's my goal. Yep. Yeah. I just want to be like, you know, that 60 year old woman that yeah. does not give a crap what anybody's thinking, but I want that now. Yeah. So how can we have that now? Wow. That, I mean... <laughs> That should be the message of this podcast. How could yeah. we have that now? Yeah. Well, for one, just realizing that everybody feels that. You right. feel it. I feel it. And we're on this like mission of understanding ourselves more. Um, I feel like that's a journey in and of itself to learn like, hey, this is who I am. I I like these things. I'm drawn to these things. I I don't care what people think about right. the influencing world. I'm going to own this it. This is me unapologetically. Exactly. Yeah. This is who I'm being. I'm being authentic and real. And I'm... Yeah. I'm good at good intentions. Yeah. I think that's number one. And then, um, exercising it when it does happen and you see it show up and kind of just like letting everybody be who they are. Mm -hmm. Like even noticing when I'm judgmental, like I noticed it last night and I was like, 
okay. I was like, I need to let that go. Like, she's just doing her thing. And, yeah. like, I'm, like, noticing it, too. So yeah, that both sides. Yeah. Both sides, yeah. So, it definitely is a journey. So, thank yeah. you so much for yeah, being here. Anything else you would want to share with the Sure Babe listeners? Oh, my goodness. Um... Oh, we have some fun, exciting oh, news yeah. we almost oh, forgot. Totally forgot. <laughs> um, well, I'm pretty sure this is going to be going live maybe after we announce, or maybe not. Maybe this is where people find out. No way. We won't <laughs> let that happen. But we're pregnant with our third. Yay! And um, if I'm being completely honest with you, it was a total surprise. Yeah. And we weren't planning on another until maybe like next. We always knew we wanted three, but mm-hmm. it came a lot sooner than we expected. But we're so excited and awesome. it's kind of tripping me out still, but we are like over the moon and I can't wait to know if it's a boy or girl. <laughs> that is so we're, how how can you were like surprised? Was it because it took you a while to get pregnant the second time? E- yes. Okay. So it took us like over a year to get pregnant with Corinne and it was yeah. super frustrating. And I mean this is like getting into like some serious details of our life. <laughs> But like literally one time when I was pregnant and I did not believe that I was like this, there's no way. There's absolutely no way. That's how Ruby was yes. conceived. Yes. I, I think it I was said that on a, on a podcast. I was like, that's why I was shocked. It felt like it was yeah. like an accident, although it wasn't. Yeah. Um, because it was like the, the chances were I know. slim like, and then we super got, slim chances. We got our girl. <laughs> Who is smiling radiantly <laughs> right now, sweet girl? So that's exciting. I know. Okay, can't wait. Right. So we're gonna be it's due exciting. in December. So a December baby. Yeah, Hello. December baby. Christmas time. Yeah. Well, three is amazing. Yes. And I am excited to see how you like just advance into motherhood as a you know having three kids. <laughs> oh gosh. And traveling. Nervous. Nervous. I can't wait for that. Traveling like, with three. Oh my gosh. I know you're not gonna stop. <laughs> So I'm excited to see how you do it because, yeah, I recently went on a road trip with all three kids. I awesome. saw that. That's it incredible. Been really great if I hadn't have gotten high at the end. Oh my gosh, but was that fun? We was that a fun it. trip? The third one, if you just keep them in their car seat, like they'll just yeah. <laughs> you know, be like, Perfect. Oh, GPS. <laughs> Chrissy doesn't take her kid out of the car seat. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, well, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you for I'm being glad here we finally did this. It's it been really a long fun. time coming. It's been a long time coming, and I'm just super excited for you. So, thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thanks. Okay. Ruby, say bye. Bye. Say bye bye. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys got a lot out of that, um, episode. I hope that, um, if you're aspiring to share your life online, that maybe this gave you a little bit of encouragement and insight into how to do so, um, in an authentic way. And I just wanted to update you guys. If you follow Mary Lauren or start following her, you will see that, um, she had a miscarriage. So after she, was um, on this podcast a few weeks later she announced that she had lost her baby so we were super heartbroken for her um, and I'm just really proud of how she's shared her grief online so if you don't already follow her go check her out on Instagram at Mary Lauren her blog is called headedsomewhere.com and I'm just really proud about how she's been really vulnerable and open about her grief and what it's like to have a miscarriage. So if you've ever had a miscarriage, um, definitely go over there and reach out to her and just see how she is processing her grief over the loss of her third baby. So thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. And yeah, if you want to contact us, you can do so on my website, chrissypowers.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Chrissy J Powers. Screenshot this episode and tag me and hashtag Sherbe Podcast. We love to see where you're listening. Also, uh, if you want to leave a review, we appreciate those so much. Leave a review wherever you listen and rate and review this podcast. It means so, so much to us. And we truly want to keep producing things that help your life and help you live the life that you're supposed to live. So my kids are going crazy in the background. Have a great weekend, you guys.